In this video, we're going to go over the brain areas that control language and speech. The first area is Broca's area. As you can see in this diagram, Broca's area is a brain region in the frontal lobe. For most people, Broca's area is located in the left hemisphere. And Broca's area is important for language production. In individuals that have damage to Broca's area, they may have what is called non-fluent expressive or Broca's aphasia. Because they have damage to a brain region important for language production, these patients are unable to produce language that is comprehensible. So what happens when they try to speak is that they often speak with poor sentence construction, disjointed words, and long pauses between words. What's interesting about these patients though is that while they have issues with language production, they don't have any problems with language comprehension. So in fact, they can understand that they're having difficulties communicating and they'll actually become very frustrated with their inability to communicate. Next, we have Wernicke's area. As you can see in this diagram, Wernicke's area is a brain region in the temporal lobe. And similar to Broca's area, it is on the left hemisphere for most people. Wernicke's area is important for language comprehension and damage to this area can result in what is called fluent sensory or Wernicke's aphasia. This can result in the loss of ability to comprehend language without affecting language production. So that means these individuals cannot understand language, but they can speak. The problem though is that because they cannot comprehend language, the speech that these patients produce often do not make sense. Finally, we have the arcuate fasciculus. As you can see in this diagram, the arcuate fasciculus is a bundle of axons that connects Broca's area and Wernicke's area. Damage to the arcuate fasciculus results in what is called conduction aphasia. The interesting thing about these patients is that they don't have damage to Broca's area or Wernicke's area, so they can actually comprehend language and produce language. What these patients have difficulties with is repeating words. And again, because these patients are able to understand language, they become very frustrated in their inability to repeat words. Okay, so those are the three main areas that control language and speech.